Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the video. So in this part we're going to take a look at the more practical aspects. We're going to do the DIY part of our speaker cables. We're going to do our own speaker cables. Which, as we have seen in the technical part, if you haven't, here's a link. Check the uh, this video before proceeding because I'll give you a lot of technical aspects regarding um, speaker cables in general, which I think are useful if you don't remember them all or if you don't have no idea of the science we could say behind the speaker cable. And now we can finally try to understand a little bit better what we're doing and why the cable we're going to do today may be considered as one of the best cables you can do for the money around in the world, really. Okay, so before beginning, we need to know what we need to do our cables. If you want to do uh, this precise cable or in general, you need uh, specific tools. Otherwise, it's very difficult to do anything. Okay, so let's start. The first thing you do need is a pair of good electrician scissors like this. This is very useful to strip wires and cut pieces, as you can imagine. I also use stripping pliers. I know a lot of people don't. I think it's a good idea because you can decide uh, how thick you want to strip your cables. This is a good item. Otherwise, even for, for bigger wires, this is an excellent one. I love this mechanism. This is one of the best. Both of these are excellent. So. These are two great choices. If you think of soldering, I do not recommend to do this. I would recommend to use something like this. A good flux, soldering flux, and a good silver base. This is 10% by Mundorf, one of the best of the best. If you want to solder the connectors again with the conductors. I do not recommend that. I asked around, I know a lot of people fill in their, con their connectors with soldering um, lead, I do not recommend it. Let's just do a cold, clean, mechanical joint, okay? So, besides that, it is not uh, mandatory, but I would recommend to have some good quality red and black heat shrink. We're gonna need some red and black, obviously for the two channels, for the final part of the cable, the ending part of the cable, and just to make it a little more fancy, where the, the two parts of the cable split up, I'm gonna also use a bigger, larger heat shrink. This is 16 millimeters. The ratio is two to one, so it will shrink half its uh, diameter. And this is eight millimeter, both of them, okay? A good idea is, as you can imagine, to use a heat gun if possible. Otherwise, you can use a nice strong hair dryer or, but I do not recommend it, a lighter. Okay, so apart from all this, you're also gonna need a dedicated Allen key. If you do want to do it, the same cable I'm doing it, you're gonna need this precise type and I'll write it down here. Okay, so we have our little Allen key. Okay, so these are the main instruments to do our cable. Now let's take a look at the parts of the cable itself. I'm gonna use this baby right here. Five meters of bulk wire by Ram Audio. Very, very cool, high quality, incredible engineering in this cable. You can do better. For example, if you really wanna go at the top of the tops, I do want to tell you which one to use. It's just too expensive, I think. But if money isn't that relevant to you, you have, you should at least go to the top of the tops, at least in my opinion, which is OCC Silver and OCC Copper by Neotech. I'm going to show some images here of what I think is the, the apex of uh, cable production in the world, really, really, guys, seriously. And I, it's not just me say, saying this. And fortunately, if you do it by yourself, yes, it costs a lot per meter, but you'll get the best of the best out there. If instead you want to keep a little bit the price down, this is the best quality 
expense ratio cable out there, in my opinion, at least. This is the Amadeus 5 MK2, dedicated to the famous composer. And I'll, I'll put an image now here so you can see in detail what's inside this baby right here. As you can see, we have, let's proceed from the outer part to the inside. This is a 16 millimeter cable, a very fat, nice baby. So the uh, apart from this nylon braid, we have a PVC jacket on the outside. In the inside, we have six main connectors, six main wires with some cotton filler beneath, between them, as you can see. And in the middle, we have an air tube. A lot of productors, cable makers, do use this technology because as we have seen in the technical part in the technical video, this is one of the best solutions to have a low dielectric constant. Air is one of the best, so we have a perfect insulation, at least for that part of the cable. If we take a look at these six wires, we have an external polyethylene HDPE jacket, which embraces seven small little wires made of OCC copper which four of these are insulated again with it with HDPE polyethylene. Plus on the outer side, we have a polyethylene type of jacket, as you can see, plus an aluminum foil. Besides all these uh, conductors, which are 11 gauge, which is in, that in millimeter terms, 2.3. So we're perfectly in the range that we just, we've discussed in the video before this one in the theory video. Plus we also have a drain, a cable for the drain, which is an OFC. And we're not going to connect that guys. We're not going to shield this baby. Nope. We said that in the other video. No need. It's worse. In speaker cables, there's no need. But why is this here? Because you can also use this cable for creating high quality power cables as well. So remember that uh, if you want to shield your cable, which I do not recommend either, not even the power cable, but if you want if you need to shield it, sometimes you really need to shield it, that's the, the good way to do it. If you want to know a little bit more on doing your own power cables, I made a video. Here is a link. Okay, so as we said in the past video on the theory, and now I want to say it again, this, the main conductors, not the main conductors, all the conductors inside here are made out of pure OCC copper, Ono Continuous Cast Copper, which is the best of the best. And if you're watching this video and you haven't seen the other one, take a look at the other one in order to understand why this is so much better. I did also a specialized, a dedicated video at the beginning almost of this channel, which has some mistakes, but it also gives a better idea on OCC. If you want to take a look also at that, here is a link. Okay, guys, so let's start doing our nice little cable. So we're gonna do, this is five meter, as I said, we're gonna do two pieces of 2.5 meters. Remember that they have to be identical. We, we said why in the other video, because we need the same resistance in order to have the same impedance with each cable. Do not do cables with different length, never, ever. Oh, I forgot to show you the other parts of the cable. We're going to use, I highly suggest, I highly recommend using spades. I got the dedicated RAM spades, but it, it's not necessary. Just get high quality spades with gold. Gold is a good isolation, doesn't, it doesn't um, deteriorate. It's not the perfect conductor, as we all know, but it doesn't deteriorate, it doesn't oxidize. Well, that's, that's something important. And as you can see, there's a very, very narrow hole. Well, not, not too narrow, actually. A lot of spades are even more narrow, but this is perfect to do a nice, cool, clean joint, as we said, mechanical joint. So that's where we're gonna need our Allen key to unscrew these parts. Very nice, very high quality, nice and heavy. And they're also nice and elegant. As you can see, we have our nice spade, which can uh, 
take up all the way to eight millimeter here and 10 millimeter here connectors of your speaker, of your loudspeaker. And here is the other little screw. We're gonna have to unscrew this afterwards, insert our cable, and then put everything back in position. I do recommend these because apart being of the same brand of the cable, so it'll, it'll be a little more fancy, it also is, I must admit, very high quality, as you can imagine. Okay, so we're gonna need, if you're gonna do the whole thing with spades, which I recommend, we're gonna need a lot of these guys. We're gonna need eight spades because we have two cables and two connectors on each side, which means eight connectors. If you prefer bananas, it has less contact. They're not that solid. They're not that uh, reliable as these, but if you prefer them, go ahead. Ram also has good quality bananas. Okay, apart from this, something else fancy. On the part where the cable is gonna split, I also managed to get these, these little splitters, where you put the cable inside. It's also a good idea because you can firm, you can stop the cable from moving too much. And the two, the red and the black conductors, uh, the twisted pair of conductors is gonna come out here. It'll give a nice nifty look, I think. And obviously you're gonna need two of these. If you don't find them of, the, of this brand, who cares? If you don't wanna use them, who cares? You'll, you'll bring down the, um, the, the, the price of this, of this cable in its total. Okay, I forgot to mention actually how much is the, the cost of this cable. Now it depends. Uh, I was able to find this around more or less in the, in the US, you're gonna pay less than me. I had to buy this in Europe and I paid around 50 euros. It depends though. You can find it all the way down, I think to $40, $45, something like that. So it is, I know it is a little expensive, but as you can see, there's a lot of copper in here, high quality copper. And trust me, I mean, if you go to, with other brands like Neotech, as we as we have seen, or Fudotech or things like that, they cost much, much more. So this is an excellent choice, guys. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so the first thing to do is to match the two wires, the two ends, and try to make two equal length cables. I just wanna say this right from the, from, from the start, from the beginning. If you wanna use heat shrink, remember to insert them. We will do this afterwards, but remember to insert them now. As soon as you want, as soon as you think you're gonna put them, put them on the cable. Otherwise, when you start putting your parts, it's difficult to turn back. Although, although in this case, we're lucky because we're not gonna use soldering. So it's very easy, simple, mechanical, cold joints that are just gonna be inserted here. So actually you just need to unscrew them, but it's always, it's always a good idea not to put too much pressure on these conductors. Unscrew, screw, unscrew, it's not good. I mean, the copper needs to be nice and flat, nice and shiny. If you start to indent too much, it's gonna have a, a worse performance. Okay, guys? Okay, so now we have to decide how long we wanna peel, take off this nice big rubber PVC external uh, coat in order to have a little bit of flexibility with our bare cables. I don't want to take away too much because obviously you're going to lose a little bit of the insulation of the protection. So let's see, say more or less this amount here. It's not that much, but it should be sufficient. And I'm going to use to strip this part, this huge external part, this, this type. As you can see, it's made on purpose. But be careful, because if you start to cut the inside part here, you're gonna have some issues. 
with the performance. So be careful. Start to work on the cable slowly to remove this part, okay? So let's start very nice and gently. Very nice and gently. Probably can already. Good idea is to see, do a little bit of, of cutting and then use your scissors to move ahead the wire this way. There we go. Turn it a little bit. Perfect. Now we have all these pieces of cotton flowing away out and about. And and nylon, we don't want this. Okay, so, but don't worry, don't worry up too much because if you're gonna use your heat shrink stuff and especially one of these, as you can see, this is gonna go inside here and come out, you, you, it doesn't need to be perfect, okay? The aesthetics. Here's the drain wire. We're not gonna use this, as I said, so let's remove it. Okay, uh, oh, I forgot to mention that this is an excellent cable if also if you wanna do B wiring. I mean, if you have a loudspeaker that uh, features B wiring. I'll put a, an image here so you can see the scheme, how to connect it. We're gonna, just gonna do a very classic, simple, uh, normal to um, normal wiring. So we're just gonna connect three and three. Uh, it doesn't matter which color, actually just the ones next to each other, that's the best choice. This one is not a conductor, as you can see it's empty. This was the air tube inserted in the center. So at this point we can cut also this guy, we don't, we don't need it, nothing in there go it's the brown one remember don't cut a conductor okay so let's try to put the, the, the brown back in the center and I would say let's do these three and these three now it's not that not that difficult guys we're just gonna strip now these join them together do the same over here we're gonna have to repeat it for all the parts different parts of the cable uh, terminations of each cable and then we're ready I mean we can put the the, the red and, and black heat shrink put them in the conductors and you're ready to go that's the beauty of cold mechanical joints and spades but let's proceed now okay so now that we have our nice conductors here we can start to peel them I suggest to remove this all the way down because we need to have a big piece, a nice big piece of bared wire in order to have the possibility to insert it all the way inside our spades. So let's say a little bit, just a little bit coming out of the pliers itself. One, two, three. Five, six, there we go. Okay, now, as you can see here, the small, not all of them, but a few for each conductor, three, I think, no, four, have polyethylene insulation. And you have to remove these. Now the best thing is to use your fingers, actually your nails, if you have strong nails. That's the best in order to have nice, uh, shiny conductors without any kind of indent because as we know, indents create issues, attenuation in the signal. So it's always better to treat nicely your conductors. Otherwise, a solution, I didn't mention this in the instruments, but I hope you have a, a pair of precision tweezers, you can do this gently. Just grab a little bit and pull it off like that. 
See? I didn't do that much damage. You have to have the, the right pressure. Okay, now let's go ahead. Once they're nice and naked, you start twisting them. Do the rest. Okay, now we have all our conductors nice and ready with a good portion of air exposed. Remember the colors you used on the other side. In our case, this was the three conductors for the black and this was for the red. At this point, it's time to put our little piece of heat shrink on one, one side. Now, if you're like me and you keep forgetting to put your heat shrink or simply if you need some help to put it on, just put a piece of tape like this to keep the nylon, the cotton, whatever is in the, in the middle, nice and flat. So you can put our little piece of heat shrink. You should put a red one for the red or the black for the, uh, the red for the right and the black for the left, obviously. If you only have one, who cares? Just remember to identify them because you might have some mistakes otherwise after that. After you've put on the piece of heat shrink, at that point you just peel off your piece of tape because we don't want that there. Um, you can also put this if you want, just to somehow distinguish it from the other channel. Plus, I forgot to mention that these cables have a direction. I know a lot of people do not believe in this, but the Ono Continuous Cast has a direction way it is cast and extruded. So, bear in mind that they are indicating a direction when this means that this is the direction, the flow of the signal. So on this side, you're gonna have your amplifier and on this side, instead, you're gonna have the loudspeakers, okay? So check the, the cable and learn which is which. That is fundamental. Okay, so now we can also install our two pieces of normal heat shrink. Let's take a fair amount. We don't want too much, but not even, it has to be the right length, because otherwise it's gonna, you're gonna see the wires and that's not cool. Try to match these. That's always a good idea. There we go. So. Let's put this one. Oh, I forgot to mention. These need, it's always a good idea to twist them. And obviously you're gonna have to twist even the three conductors all together in one single one. I'm probably gonna start bleeding because I did cables all day. Okay. And just slip on this way. Perfecto. Okay. Slip this on. There we go. Now, I'm going to take our heat gun and start with one. We can slide now this little piece, which will keep everything a little bit more elegant and tight and nifty. Not too much. Be careful also of the nylon braid, it will melt. So don't point the heat gun on it, for at least not too long. 
always stay on the heat shrink itself. Okay. At this point, we're gonna slip on on the uh, side of the speaker, the splitter, because this is a little more fancy. On the other side, we can just leave it this way. We don't care. Nobody's gonna ever gonna see it, and it gives us more room and space on the part of the amplifier. Okay, guys? So, let's just slip this in. goes inside the rubber and disappears okay at this point now we can prepare our spades let's prepare spade so it's nice and open ready to accept our cable our conductor there we go nice and ready at this point we start putting our uh, external part. If we want, if we think this is a little too large, we can use uh, specific pliers, which are nice and soft and a little bit flatten out a few parts. Not too much, because otherwise you're gonna indent the, um, the conductor. We don't want that. And also, if you think they're too long, but these are pretty good, you can also cut off the tips. You're always in time to cut, never in time to add. Okay, so red goes with red. The little, uh, the, the writing has to go towards the spade, like this. Gently insert it, otherwise you're gonna ruin the exterior. I'm gonna do it, unfortunately, because this, um, this heat shrink is a little too stiff, a little too thick. So I need to almost wind it inside. Okay, number one. Number two. This one went nicely in. Okay, so let's start with one. Go. Start locking the one closer to the conductor. Not all the way. And the other one. And if you want, you can pour solder inside. You make a whole piece, but I do not recommend it. This is very narrow. It fits perfectly. No need. And if the manufacturer says so, I believe them. This has to be really something flat, otherwise this is not gonna go in position. Okay. Go. Last little screw in. There we go. Our cable is done. Repeat for four other times, three other times, and we're set. Haha, I did it all the other already the other one. This is our finished cable. Cool guys. Ah! 
Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.